Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this webinar on using thermistors. Um, as usual, we'll go straight into the presentation. If you have any questions, you can put them in at any point and we'll get them at the end. Hello and welcome to today's webinar. Let's get started. Today, we're going to be looking at using thermistors with Horner OCS all-in-one controllers. Let's look at our agenda for today. We'll start by defining what a thermistor is and where it would be used. We'll talk about which Horner products support thermistors and which specific thermistors are supported, as there's more variation with thermistors than any other type of sensor. There will be demonstrations throughout and we'll finish with a Q&A session. A thermistor is a temperature sensor whose resistance varies with temperature, which is the definition of an RTD as well. So we'll compare the similarities, but primarily the differences, between thermistors and RTDs. So thermistors are made materially of metal oxides or combinations of metals, whereas our RTDs are usually pure metals. Thermistor standards vary by manufacturer, whereas RTDs are more standardised. So if you buy a PT100 RTD from a manufacturer, you know that the same PT100 specification purchased from a different manufacturer will yield roughly the same results. That's not always true with thermistors. Another thing about thermistors is their resistance versus temperature curve is exponential, whereas RTDs are much more linear. Also, thermistors have a much narrower temperature range than RTDs. There are two different classifications of thermistors. There are NTC thermistors and PTC thermistors. NTC stands for negative temperature coefficient, which means the resistance falls as the temperature rises. Now, these are the sensors that are typically used to measure temperature, but there's also something called a positive temperature coefficient, where resistance rises as temperature rises. And these are typically used as a fuse. For today's topic, we're going to be talking about thermistors, and more specifically, NTC temperature sensing thermistors. On the screen, we can see a schematic of one of our Forerunner I.O. modules that supports thermistors. And we can see on the far left there that we're showing an external wiring of a thermistor into the module for measurement purposes. And then, on the right-hand side of the diagram, we can see in the internal module circuitry a PTC-type thermistor. This is being used as a fuse. So they're both very commonly used, but from an industrial standpoint, when it comes to temperature measurement, we're talking about NTC thermistors. The advantages of thermistors are that they're very stable, inexpensive and durable. Some disadvantages of thermistors are the fact that they have a very limited range, are non-linear, they're relatively slow and they're not very well standardised. Thermistors on the surface could appear to be similar, but if purchased from two different manufacturers, they could behave quite differently because they have different temperature curves. Now we'll look at the thermistor resistance versus temperature curve that we have here on the middle of the screen, and we can see that it's an exponential relationship. Now, the temperature ranges shown here on the screen with the graph are approximately minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit to about 240 degrees Fahrenheit, and there's a significant difference in terms of the resistance, as the resistance goes to over 200K and can be well below 1K at the low end. And then, on the right there, we can see a segment of the thermistor chart, which is a temperature range between 50 degrees Fahrenheit and 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which is popular because it's the ambient range very commonly used, especially in indoor applications. And even in that limited range, we can see that there's quite a difference in terms of resistance. So we know thermistors are used for building automation and for HVAC, but we'll look at the different temperatures that need to be measured in those particular applications. They can measure the temperature in an air duct, the temperature of a room, outdoor air temperature, ambient air temperature, for example, in a warehouse, air temperature in a refrigerator, and it doesn't have to be air. It could also be water temperature of a cooling tower or a swimming pool. So again, we can see that these most common applications are building automation and HVAC type related. Now we'll look at specific Horner products which support thermistors. Starting with the smart block analog input modules, ADC 570 and ADC 970. One is a six channel and the other is a 12 channel, but apart from that, they have the same specifications. They both support voltage, current or thermistor as inputs on each of their channels, channel by channel selectable, and the module handles all the linearization and the conversion to temperature on board, so we don't have to do any of that externally. And the temperature values that are reported by the module are in degrees Celsius or degrees Fahrenheit, and they're reported in 10th degree increments. You can find thermistor support as a special support IO option in the XLE and the XLT, the XL series and the XL prime series. The Model 2 I.O. option is available with either a 2-channel or 4-channel specific order option. The Model 3 and Model 4, which have solid state outputs in slightly different mixes in general, they have a 2-channel option for thermistor. Because this was added after the fact as a special order, the linearization and the temperature conversion are handled in the application program. 
There is an 8-channel through mystery module, which is currently under development and will be coming for OCSIO later in 2023, and it will also support linearization internally. Now we look at which thermistors are currently supported. As we've seen already, thermistors are not standardised in the same way that RTDs and thermocouples are, and the resistance versus temperature tables can vary by manufacturer. We have a few different brands of thermistor manufacturers that have been around for a long time that we're supporting. Starting with Kiel Engineering, we support their Precon 10k ohm Type 3 thermistors. And then from Yellow Springs Instruments, we have some 10k thermistors that are also supported. And you can also see part numbers listed there on the chart. So, if you're looking to use thermistors with the Horner products, you need to choose from these particular thermistors. So now we look at applying other brands with a Horner product that supports thermistors, such as an XL Series Model 2 Special Order, for example. We could use an equation called the Steinhardt and Hart equation. And if you have that equation and the temperature versus resistance chart for the thermistor you wanted to use, you could apply a mathematical equation and come up with a resistance to temperature type conversion. However, that is beyond the scope of today's topic but we might revisit this in the future and create a UDFB to handle all the calculations. Now we'll go into more detail about the process involved when linearizing the values that are coming back from your model 2, 3 or 4 thermistor option. So you'll take the raw analog input reading coming from the AI channel and you run that through an equation. And that equation takes two math expression blocks to execute it just because of the length of it. And it also involves eight coefficients which are used in the equation. So now you'll take the coefficients or constants that we provide you and you'll use a constant move block to put those into registers if you're using register-based advanced ladder or variables if you're using variable-based advanced ladder. And then you're going to execute an equation shown at the bottom there that takes the raw analog input value, converts it to a real number, runs it through the equation and then at the end produces the temperature in real numbers. So this is a document that we've created, Horner Documents Supplement 797, which provides all the details. So here we have a smart block module. This is an ADC 570 smart block, which has six channels of analog input, all of which can be configured for a thermistor and you can select that channel by channel. Then we have an XLE with built-in Ethernet. That also includes the XL series with thermistor option. So this is a model 2-10, which is two channels of thermistor and two channels of regular analog. And finally, we have an EXLW touchscreen OCS, which is used to communicate with the ADC570 and to display the values for both the ADC570 and the XLE. And finally, here are the thermistor sensors, one connected to the ADC and one connected to the XLE. Now we'll look at Seascape. We'll start in the EXLW program and we'll look at the configuration for the smart block. So we go into hardware configuration here and then to CanIO tab because smart block is a CanIO family. And we've already added this ADC 576 channel analog input module, so we'll double click and see how it's configured. So it's been assigned a scan ID of 1, and we've also assigned the starting real world analog input register as AI32 as an array. Because we're using variable based advanced ladder, it uses arrays as the real world analog input values as variables. So AI32 as an array correlates to percent AI33 as a real world analog input memory register. And there are six consecutive analog input values which are going to be reported by the smart block. We've also assigned a status variable, which is important to monitor the health of any kind of remote I.O. block. And then, on the six channels, for channel number four only, we have selected a 10k thermistor as the input, and we've selected degrees Fahrenheit. And those values will be reported back in 10th degree increments. So that's all that's required for the configuration. Now we'll look at the data watch, and we can see the raw data coming back from the smart block. It's only channel 4 that's configured for thermistor, and that shows that we're at 65.9 degrees Fahrenheit for that thermistor input, because it's giving an integer value of 659. It also shows how AI35 as a real-world I.O. array in variable-based advanced ladder correlates to percent AI36 when it comes to actual memory addresses. Here we can see the data being reported by the smart block at 65.9 degrees Fahrenheit. Also here, we have an ADC 570 OK LED on the screen. So now we'll look at how we created that. We'll show under the Receive I.O. section that we created a single rung that monitors the status register of that smart block and assigned a status variable to it. If it has a value of zero, we know everything is good. So we can turn on our OK indicator and if it's off then later in our program or other places in our program, we know something's wrong. So that's what's involved in using the ADC 570 or 970 smart lock modules for thermistor inputs. There's a bit more involved in the XL series thermistor option. So we'll look at that now. We'll start in the main loop and we can see no code there because we'll look at configuration first. 
So we'll go back into hardware configuration and this time we'll look at XLE and then we'll look at local I.O. because this is a built-in I.O. option. We'll select config and then module setup and we'll go to analog in. Now in the XL series configuration there won't be thermistor as an option as thermistor support was added after the fact as a special order. So when you're using a thermistor with the special order XL series option you need to select voltage as your input range for any channel that's supporting thermistor. And since this is a dash 10 two channel module, we've opted for voltage for the first two channels. And then for the second two channels, we select those for whatever type of temperature sensor is used there. We've also put the filter constant up to seven, as that gives a really stable reading, which we value more than a really responsive reading. So that's the configuration. So that gets an analog input value coming from the built-in module in our analog input register, but it doesn't linearize or convert to temperature. So that's where the equation that we need to execute comes in, to take our analog input reading and convert it to temperature. So here we've moved eight coefficients that were provided in the thermistor supplement, and we've inserted them into a constant move block, and we can see that they are in scientific notation, with six digit levels of precision. And because we're using variable-based advanced ladder, we're copying these values into a variable array that is using a real type variable with a dimension of eight. That way, it can hold eight different values from TKF0 through TKF7. And we chose that variable name because we're having it stand for thermistor constant for Fahrenheit. If we were doing the conversion in degrees Celsius, we could use a separate set of coefficients that are aimed towards degrees Celsius. And we created a different real array with a dimension of 8 for thermistor constants or coefficient degrees Celsius. But we're going to be using the degrees Fahrenheit in this particular application example. So we've taken those coefficients and the raw value that's coming in through the analog input register, and we run it through this calculation, which takes two steps. And then we took an extra step that isn't necessarily required, which is, at the end of our calculation, we not only have a real value in degrees Fahrenheit for temperature, but have also taken and created an integer value in 10th degree increments of that same temperature by taking the real value multiplying by 10 and then converting from real to an integer. So that's what we've done in this XLE. The raw value coming in from the AI is about 19,000 counts. And after we run it through our equation with those coefficients, we ended up with approximately 66 degrees Fahrenheit, which correlates to 18.9 degrees Celsius. So that's what's involved in the XLE from a channel by channel basis for every channel that you're using thermistor for. You'll also notice that we have the XLE's thermistor value being displayed here, as well as an OK indicator as well for that controller. So we'll look at how we did that. This would be an extra part of the application that most applications wouldn't need unless you're using the XLE as a remote I.O. block attached to an OCS. So now we'll look at how the XLE is broadcasting its thermistor temperature over the C-Scan network and how that's being received by the EXLW so it can be displayed on the screen and used in the EXLW logic program. So we'll go to the broadcast I.O. section of the program that we created and we're going to make use of the 100 millisecond timer that's built into the OCS firmware as a system bit. And we're taking that and creating a one shot that turns on every 100 milliseconds. And every 100 milliseconds, we take the real value from the user defined function block, which is in degrees Fahrenheit, and we're multiplying that by 10 to create a new variable that's in 10th degree increments, converting that to an integer and broadcasting it out over CAN. When we broadcast it out, the XLE needs to specify its own CAN ID, which is handled by the system variable CAN ID, which is sending the data out as analog global data. It's the first word of up to 32 or 64 available AQ values, so the offset is zero. And the source data is that integer value in 10th degree increments that we created earlier in the run, and we only send one word. So it's important to note that we don't want to send or put data to the network every single scan, just on a periodic basis. So that's why we made use of this 100 millisecond built-in timing capability and created a bit that was on once every 100 milliseconds to do the sending. So that gets the data to the network. Now we'll look at how it's received by the EXLW. Let's go back to that program. And we have another section of that program called Receive IO, where we're basically using a netget function to retrieve data that was broadcast by network ID2, which is the XLE. It's coming from the analog data from the XLE, again with no offset, and we're copying it locally into this local variable. So that's all that's required here. And then one last thing is that we also created an OK bit for the data coming in from the XLE, so that if the XLE stops communicating for more than a second, then we can turn off this coil, which otherwise would be on. So here we can see the value coming in from the XLE, 65.9 or 66 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's reflected here, and we can also see the OK LED. 
To stop this controller, we go to the system menu and down to status. We can stop the XLE and therefore it would stop broadcasting. So within a second, the OK light goes out. And now if we restart the XLE and go back into run mode, we see the status went green again. So that is a look at how to apply thermistor with the Horner OCS. So the important points today are that thermistors are extremely popular in building automation applications and are very inexpensive. They only support a narrow temperature range, but for HVAC and building automation, that's not a problem. Unlike RTDs and thermocouples, thermistors are not standardised, so be careful in terms of which thermistors you source. If you're using them with a Horner controller, choose from the Keel or the YSI as they are widely available, very inexpensive, and they'll work extremely well with the Horner controllers. So that concludes our webinar for today. Thank you so much for listening, and the Q&A session will begin shortly. Okay, nice and direct. Um, next week, we do have an information webinar about our new OCSIO um, expansion IO that'll be coming. So you can register for that now. And as always, all the past webinars are there. Um, okay, I'm not seeing anything in. So on that note, thank you all for joining us this morning. And uh, we hope to see you again next week.